Hi everyone. Every time that we make a video, I always feel the need to say that I miss you all because I do. And I really look forward to the day when we can all be together under one roof again and in fellowship with each other. It's been so great to receive so many uh, phone calls and texts, emails, Facebook messages, um, hearing from each one of you and uh, talking about uh, what a blessing it's been to be able to get together in this unique way through YouTube and uh, through social media. It's not ideal, but uh, it's better than uh, nothing at all. And I certainly have enjoyed hearing from so many of you and even running into a few of you from time to time when uh, we have to be out uh, to do uh, what, whatever it is we need to do to go to the grocery store or to stop by church. Uh, but keep safe, and as uh, we have a new order today from the state of Missouri to shelter in place for the whole state, uh, all the more please take care of yourselves and especially those that uh, have greater needs, uh, the elderly and those with uh, health needs. Uh, be sure and, and let's take care of them and, and guard them from the, the danger of this virus and any kind of danger. I'm looking forward to this Sunday, and uh, we will be together again uh, via YouTube on Sunday morning at 10 a.m., so I hope you'll join us for that. But as much as I'm looking forward to that, I'm really looking forward to uh, the seven last statements of Christ from the cross this Sunday night. The easiest thing to do uh, would have been to cancel it and uh, just say, since we can't be together, we're not going to do it. But each of the men who were already scheduled to be a part of this uh, we're willing to uh, video record their portion of the seven last statements, and uh, Andy Wilson has also, also graciously um, been willing to put all those together into one video. So I'm really looking forward to it, even though I, I would really prefer to uh, have been together under one roof and to experience this uh, as a group, uh, this is the next best thing. So I hope it's a blessing to you. I'm so appreciative of the men and uh, the ladies uh, that, have, that are going to take part in this because we're going to have seven men, and then we're going to have seven songs. And uh, some of those songs are going to be uh, sung by individuals. Uh, some of them are going to be uh, congregational, yeah, as we have been doing it. You'll be able to sing in your homes as a family, and uh, I hope that you'll be a, I hope that you'll be a part of it, whether it's Sunday night when it, it airs at uh, seven, six o'clock, sorry, six o'clock, or whether you go back and watch it later. Uh, if you weren't here the last few years when we've uh, done this, uh, it's 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 something unique, and so I hope that you'll be a part of it. I wanted to take a minute and look at a passage of scripture that uh, I ran across in my devotions this morning. Uh, I'm in the 12th chapter of Romans, and it's, it's very familiar, the first two verses we know. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourselves a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable or spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. And... That's important, certainly. It's so important that we bring that verse up a lot. And even in this time, the easiest thing to do would be to be conformed uh, to the way that uh, so many are thinking and, and living in, in a great degree of fear and no one to depend upon. Uh, but we don't have to do that. We can be transformed by the renewing of our mind, understanding that we can always rely on our Heavenly Father. And none of this... Uh, has taken him by surprise. It's uh, it's all in his purview, and that he's going to bring us through it for his glory. But what we don't often do is go on to the next few verses. So I want to read the next few verses in Romans chapter 12, because they really certainly apply to our, our everyday Christian life, but they have some application in the situation we're in right now. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, 
are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy, abhor what is evil, cling to what is good, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse, rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay, repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. What great words to remember again all the time as we uh, walk with the Lord and we walk in His Spirit. But during this time, there are so many things I could spend a lot of time, and my point was not to spend a lot of time tonight. Uh, so go back and, and think on these passages, think on these verses in Romans 12, uh, 1 through 17, and see how there's a lot of application for what we're dealing with right now, that even though we're sheltering in place, we can still deal with people in patience, and we can still rejoice in hope. As a matter of fact, we should be more than any other time now rejoicing in hope. We can continue steadfastly in prayer, as we've talked about many times just in the last few weeks. Uh, there's one thing we're not restrained from doing when we're sheltering in place, and that's taking the time to go to the Lord in prayer. And to do so, here he says, steadfastly, always having that attitude of prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, I was so uh, happy and impressed of how many people have donated items uh, to be distributed. And we haven't had a whole lot of people call with needs yet. But if we do, we have the things to distribute. And for those that, of you in the Illuminate ministry that took part in making the, uh, the hospital masks, uh, what a great ministry that who could ever have anticipated uh, but thanks for stepping up because that's a part of, of distributing to those needs and to to be given to hospitality. Uh, you know, we can't have people in our homes right now, but we can still be hospitable and we can uh, reach out through the phone and we can reach out through social media and still make connections. We can write cards and letters to folks and still make those connections uh, that, uh, that are hospitable in a different way than what we normally think of, to bless those who persecute you. You know, uh, this is a, a hopefully I, you found a good use of uh, the internet and social media, but there's a lot of poison on uh, Facebook and in a lot of social media platforms. And the easiest thing to do is hit back at people that you disagree with or people that, uh, that, that shoot at you. Uh, instead, uh, be quiet and bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse, he says in verse 14. So much here that I could pre preach a whole message, but I'll save that for Sunday. Go and read the, the 12th chapter of the book of Romans, not just those first two verses that we're real familiar with, but read the whole thing and see how you can look at it a little bit differently in the situation we're in now and make application of those things. I hope that you can join us on Sunday morning. And again, I hope you can join us on uh, Sunday evening for the seven last statements of Christ. Invite somebody uh, to watch along with you, even though they're not going to be in the same room. Uh, send them an invitation. That's available on Facebook, and I sent it out uh, via email this week. I'll send it out again uh, tonight or tomorrow morning, Saturday morning. And uh, you can send that on ahead to somebody or post it on your Facebook page and invite people to be a part of that. Uh, I, I'm confident it's going to be a great blessing, and particularly if there are folks that, that, that you know that don't know Christ as their Savior, I know that the gospel message is going to be clearly presented. I hope that you're staying warm on this uh, chilly evening. Uh, I understand we, we had 70 degree temperatures just yesterday. 
We're going to have cold temperatures the next few days and back to the 70s the first of the week. It's Missouri weather. Uh, we adapt to it if you're a lifelong Missourian. And so even the sheltering in place and the COVID-19 virus you know, shouldn't be a big challenge for us because we know how to adapt to, to odd situations. God bless you all, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come to you uh, again, though we're not in one place together, we are in one spirit. And Father, we, we strive to be of one mind, uh, and that mind is centered on you, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the word that you've set forth. And Father, we pray that as uh, the weekend unfolds, that you would give us wisdom in your word, that we would consider the things that we've read tonight, go back and consider them even again as we reread them and meditate on them and uh, that you would lead us to take these things and adapt them to the circumstances we're in now, show us how to apply them in a, a way that we're not used to, but will still be to your glory and honor and be a ministry to others. Father, we pray in advance your blessings on the Sunday morning service and on the Sunday evening service. And Father, as uh, these messages go out, uh, we, we know that therefore us as a congregation but they have a, a, an opportunity to go out even wider and maybe reach someone who doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Savior. So, Father, we pray that if there's one out there that hears the messages, uh, any of the messages that have been presented or will be presented in the days and weeks to come, that it might touch their heart and they might come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. We pray that all the glory would go to you and you alone. In Christ's name, amen. Have a great night. Have a great Saturday, and I hope to see you. You'll see me. I won't see you, but uh, <laughs> nevertheless, I hope to see you on Sunday. God bless you all.